Hi everybody, it's Karen here from tuppenscolour.co.uk and thank you very much for joining me. And this is the card that I've been making today. Now in the UK we celebrate Mothering Sunday, um, which is in the middle of Lent. Uh, so we've had our Mother's Day, it was a couple of weeks ago. But I know in other parts of the world you celebrate Mother's Day later on. I think it's in May, something like that. Uh, and this card might be nice to give to your mum on Mother's Day, or it might be a nice card just to give to, uh, just to somebody to say that you love them. And if you stay with me, I will show you how I made it. These are the things that I'm going to be using today. My card base is crumb cake and it's 11 and a half by 5 and 3 quarters. And I've scored and folded it at 5 and 3 quarters to make a square card base. On top of that, I've got a piece of soft sky and that is 5 and a half inches square. Uh, I've got a couple of scraps for, uh, for cutting and stamping on. I've got some crumb cake and I've got some blushing bride. I'm going to be using crumb cake ink and the sunshine saying stamps and the sunshine wishes wishes thinlets uh, and at the moment in the uh, in the current annual catalogue these are a bundle so that you can get a discount when you buy the two together which is always worth knowing about from the spring summer catalogue i am using the falling petals embossing folder and i've got the falling in love embellishments and the delicate doilies and uh, some lace trim. I'm going to be doing some big shot work in a minute and because I've got a few things that I want to put through it I'm going to do all of my my cutting and my embossing in one go and I just want to explain a bit about what platforms I'm using and why okay so uh, I'm going to start with these pieces because they are intricate and delicate and for those I am going to be using my precision base plate so my card and my stamps go onto the precision base plate, which is extra specially hard, okay? And if I'm using my magnetic platform or my multi-purpose platform, that then goes straight on top of there, just like that. And I put another plate over the top, just like that, and I'm gonna run that through the big shot, okay? So that's those dies, but the uh, embossing folder needs a slightly different treatment. Now, again, I'm using a multi-purpose platform. My Big Shot's very, very old. It's one of, I think, the first that became available. I think it's it's something, it's getting on for 12 years old now. Uh, and it's seen sterling service and it's still going strong. Um, uh, so I, at the moment, don't see any reason to replace it. And I'm not going to, okay? Uh, but for embossing, I need a slightly different um, setup. So I'm going to open all of the tabs. Now, if you've got one of the, the new platforms, you don't need any, um, any of the shims, any of the supplementary platforms on it at all. It's just on the base, okay? And I'm going to put one of my cutting plates underneath it, one on top of it, and then actually I'm going to turn it that way so the folded edge is going into the big shot first. And then I'm just going to run it through just like that, uh, and that will emboss my card beautifully. I'm back, and as you can see, uh, I've got a lovely clean cut on my die cut pieces, and this has got a lovely deep emboss on it. Uh, now at the moment, it's quite difficult to see, and I want this card to have a kind of vintage distressed -y look, so I'm gonna bring in my, uh, my splodge mat, my uh, blending mat, and I've got my sponge, uh, with crumb cake ink on and I'm just going to put a little bit more on. Now you can work on a silicone mat, you can work on a bit of grid paper, you can work on whatever you've got. I like these these kind of mats because you can just dab your excess ink off onto them and uh, you don't waste it because you can pick it up again later. So I'm just going to gently sponge.
plate strips of crumb cake card here. They're about two and a half inches long and it's not critical because I'm going to cut them down in a moment. And I've mounted up the words sending and and hugs uh, and I've got them already mounted on my clear block. I've got crumb cake ink here because I'm going to go tone on tone and I'm just going to stamp onto each of these little strips. And I'm getting trying to get it reasonably straight but I'm not kind of getting obsessive about it okay because it's really not that critical okay I don't like the way that one came out because I caught the um I caught the corner there so luckily we have magic two-sided card and I can just turn it over and start again and be a little bit more careful this time let's get that straight there we are that's better So now I've got my, my snips and I'm just going to cut that off about where I want it and I'm going to cut halfway in and I'm just going to snip in right up to that, uh, that centre cut and I'm just going to make it into a little banner end just like that okay because this is too small really to fit into the triple banner punch so we'll just go old school on it because this is what we used to do before we had all those wonderful tools and uh, doing this every now and again helps us to appreciate what we've got these days okay so still got a little bit of crumb cake ink on my sponge here just so that everything has got the same kind of vintagey look I'm just gonna sponge along those edges okay and there we go let's start putting the pieces together now so i've got my uh, length of lace trim which is long enough to go right around the front of the card and have a bit of an overlap at the back and uh, off camera i have sponged it because it was just too clean <laughs> And it didn't go in with the rest of the, the card. So I'm just cutting a length of ordinary clear tape, the kind that you get the stationers. And I'm deciding about where I want that to be, which is about there. And as you can see, I've started putting tear and tape onto the back of this. I'm just going to stick that down with an ordinary sticky tape, scotch tape, cello tape, whatever you, uh, whatever you have. This is a, uh, a well-known stationery chain's own brand. And I've got that bit stuck on my finger because it's the uh, it's the mucky end that I cut off. And uh, it doesn't want to go away. There you go. So I'm just getting this reasonably straight and reasonably where I want it. Now it's. Um, it's not exactly halfway across the card. It's about, oh, I don't know, five-eighths of the way up, something like that. Um, because cards tend to look better when they've got a little bit more weight, particularly if it's a square card or a horizontal card. They look a bit better if they've got a little bit more weight at, towards the bottom, um, which I suppose is, uh, is true of many things. So I'm just going to put a couple of extra bits of tear and tape along the back. And liquid adhesive would have done well, and it's uh, usually my adhesive of choice, but today I'm just going with the jolly old tear and tape. So I'm just going to partially remove the backing strip. Come on, there you go. Just fold it out of the way just like that. like that because by doing this I give myself a bit of wiggle time and we all love wiggle time all right so let's make sure I've got my card the right way because we don't want to make an upside down card do we 
Although, uh, it has been known on more than one occasion. Okay, and that's not as straight as it could. So, I'm just going to wiggle that a little bit. There we go. Luckily, it's a distressed looking card. So people will think that I meant it. I have terrible problems with straight. I have astigmatism. I think that may be something to do with it, but I really do have terrible issues with knowing when things are straight. Isn't it awful? Okay, so now let's have a look at how I want the rest of this to look. Okay. So we've got sending love and hugs. Let's put it the right way around. That would help, wouldn't it? Yes. Well done, Karen. So how do I want this to look? Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm thinking that's about the way I want it. So let's start doing some assembly here. So it's uh, glue on the back of the hand time again. If that makes you worried, look away now. Um, oh, and I should have said as well, um, the, this doily, it, one side is whisper white and one side is very vanilla. Um, so you, you, you know, depending on what you're making, whether you want uh, the bright white or the, the warmer, very vanilla, it is entirely up to you. You get to choose. Okay, so where am I putting that? Around about. Right about there, I think. I'm not pushing down on these sides because um, my sending is going to go there, and I, I want to hide the cut end under the edge of the um, edge of the doily and hugs. And I've said before, don't do this if you have sensitive skin. Use a sponge or dab it on a mat or something. Okay. But, uh, I have something akin to rhinoceros hide, so uh, it doesn't affect me. And it is, I certainly wouldn't do this with a um, with solvent-based ink. This is uh, a water-based ink it's, and ink. Um, glue adhesive that's the word that's what I'm doing and uh, you see what I've done now I've put the love word love down before I put the heart down not to worry okay we have a little bit of wiggle time so we can we can fix that concentrate Karen concentrate dear me what would my old English teacher have said to me she wouldn't have been happy at all okay now that is much more like it. Much happier with that. Okay, stay boy, stay. Okay. And um, does anything need wiggling? No, I think I'm okay with that. Okay. So clean off the back of my hand. I got a bit of stamping mist and a paper towel. And there you go. Last final finishing touch. I have one of the Falling in Love embellishments and my glue dots, who I hope are speaking to me today. And I'm just going to press the embellishment down onto a glue dot. And yes, that's picked it up. And that's going to go right over the letter O in love, just like that. And there you are, I think that's finished. So there it is, the Sending Love and Hugs card. And I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if so, then do come back again. I'd love to see you. Uh, you might even want to subscribe to my channel. Uh, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Um, particularly if you think doing a, a live stream might be a good idea because I am considering doing that again. But in any case, thank you very, very much for joining me. Uh, and I hope I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>